Don Hall back again with Coil Kilns, and I'm with my buddy Amanda, who works up here as the, the throwing instructor, and uh, she is going to do a, a demo for us today on how she makes these donut-shaped uh, pieces. She throws them on a wheel. Say hello, Amanda. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you in the studio. Okay, we're back at Quail Kilns, and I'm going to be throwing a donut. Um, lots of things you can do with a donut. I'll talk a little bit about that. But what I'm using is our beautiful sandstone buff. It's actually called Easy Center Sandstone Buff, and we've been making it for about 65 years. So I have about six and a half pounds of clay. I've got it centered. When it looks like it's standing still, you know it's centered, and I'm going to compress it and expand it out. <clears throat> in making a donut, you want to throw your piece because you're building a wide, a wide piece of pottery. You want to build it on a plaster bat. I really like using a plaster bat because at the end of the day, after it dries, it's just going to pop off. So I've got this compressed. I think I'll go just a little bit wider. <clears throat> and again, I use a little bit of water to help me keep the clay moving and smooth and fluid. And that's about as wide as I'm gonna go. Now what I'm gonna do is open it up and I'm gonna go all the way down to the bat. But when you go down to the bat, you wanna keep a small film of clay. Notice how I'm using my thumb here to keep that compressed. So as you're pulling out, you don't end up losing a big chunk of clay. So that gives me an idea what my opening is. And there's a little small film of clay inside, which keeps your piece stable. So I'll go just a little bit wider. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the interior wall. So here we go. I'm gonna press down, like when we open up a pot normally and I've got a nice wall to start pulling up. And I like to keep it a little bit on the fatter side and I'll put a little angle, a little right angle, so that when the other piece comes up, they'll marry together very nicely. A little bit of water. I'm gonna go back down. I wanna be, oh, about a quarter of an inch and you want your walls to be pretty even. All right, so now I'm gonna pull the bottom section out. And again, a little bit of water. And now I'll go ahead and pull that section up. Just gently squeezing it up right between your fingers. We'll go up just a little bit higher. And this one, I'm gonna angle it on the inside. And I wanna have the walls pretty close to the same thickness. All right. I'm gonna slow my wheel down. That's one thing I always forget to do, is once you've been throwing for a little while, you in my studio here, I'm considered a speed demon. I bet there's a lot of others out there too. So I'm gonna push this and marry these two seams together. One's angled one direction, one's angled the other direction. Almost there. Looks like a chip and dip bowl. Uh-oh. Okay, so they've now become one piece. I've got a hollow donut, as my friend would call it, a bagel. Um, and once you get these pieces connected, you've captured the air inside, so you can manipulate the shape of your, your uh, donut. And I'm gonna compress that seam, and you really want that seam to disappear and become part of each other. <clears throat> and I switch between using my metal rib and my rubber red rubber rib by Mud Tools. We love these red rubber ribs. So I've created a nice round circle. And it's very important, by the way, after you create your donut and you're finished shaping it, that you poke a hole in it. 
And one of the things that I really like to do is um, is you want to work it to really go back and forth. You want to push it from the right and then you want to push it from the left so that you can really get that, that seam attached. Okay, so I'm going to finish off the stone head. I'm going to undercut it. I love this triangle tool. I'm not sure who made it. Um, and just undercut a little bit because that's where your thickness, th thickness lays. And we will be trimming a donut shortly just so you can see what happens there. And I like to clean the inside out. Uh, again, this is where the thickness is. So I'll just use my uh, angular tool and take some of that clay out. And I'll skim it, curve it underneath. Again, just eliminating the extra work on trimming. a completed it's bone dry no it's uh, it just is dry and the beautiful thing about a plaster bat is after it dries it absorbs the moisture and it just pops right off so you're ready to trim it so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my wheel and create a little bit of a suction and make sure I'm centered and I'm not very good at tap center so I do it a little, a little old fashioned. <laughs> I'm tapping it, but it's not in motion. Okay. All right, almost there, so I apologize. The other thing that I have uh, on my wheel is I have a chamois that I put underneath my, my bat because a lot of times the bats, the holes tend to stretch out. Okay, so we're centered and I'm gonna start trimming. And I'm just gonna start out with rounding the edge. And I know that that's where most of the weight sits. And I'll just trim that all off on the outside and the inside. And one of the things in your shaping before you finish your, your piece, you can, you can make it into a square donut or you can round it as I have here but the trimming really brings out the, the, the beautiful curved shape. And by the way, there's a lot of things you can do with donuts. What I do is I make, uh, I make teapots out of them. I've actually cut them into four pieces and created sculpture, sculpture fish, excellent sculpture fish. And so now I'm again trimming the inside and I'll just keep working on this. What I'm gonna do with this particular piece is I'm gonna chatter it and turn it into a teapot. So again, taking off the, the heavy weight and the thinnest area usually is right on top. So I try to bring the clay to that point and then I'll just take a, a small amount off of, the, off of the top. Okay, one of, the, one of the things I'm doing now is trimming and it's very important after you trim your piece that you use a burnishing instrument. Some people use stones. I use the red rib, it's a mud tool, and I love the finish. This is stoneware and it gives you a pristine finish. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna chatter this, and this is my chattering tool. It's actually by Shin's Tools, and he's a local California resident and an amazing potter. And so I'm just gonna hold my tool gently at an angle towards me, and I'm gonna allow a little bit of resistance. And if you could see it, it's bouncing. And you can also hear it. Whoops, sometimes you do that, and that's okay. Let's see if we can go back over there. Beautiful chatter marks. All right, well that's it. This is Amanda from Quail Kilns in Murphys, California. I want to thank Don Hall for videotaping this segment and I want you to hit the subscribe button and you'll be seeing lots more videos coming up your way.